Hello, my name is Carlos Wells, representing South Dakota State University Extension and the USDA Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program Education. Today I'm going to share tips and tools for cooking with kids. Children are more likely to eat something that they've had a hand in preparing. And in the case of healthy foods like fruits and vegetables, this can improve their diets as well as their skills. Helping kids be safe and successful in their cooking experience is essential. Choosing kid-friendly tools is important and not too expensive. Several sources of these tools are in stores or online, such as Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon.com, and CuriousChef.com. The veggie prep set shown below includes several peelers and scoops, a veggie brush, a rubber scraper, a skid-proof cutting board, and a Safer Kids plastic knife. Don't forget that many foods, especially those fruits and vegetables, can be cut up with a kitchen shears if they're sized for children's hands. Some other small tools made for children's hands with a smaller size and less motor control include easy grip graters, color-coded measuring tools with giraffe neck handles, and pouring spouts for less spilling. Mixing ingredients is easier to control with slip-proof mixing bowls with a handle for gripping. And finally, to those hard-to-dry salad greens, a salad spinner. Because fresh produce can be difficult to cut, tools should be chosen that best suit the task. An apple slicer with easy grip, non-slip handles is a perfect example. These can also be used for other fruits and vegetables such as peppers or tomatoes. The plastic vegetable knife is amazingly effective, though totally safe on fingers. When ingredients need to be more finely chopped, kids love to bounce the handle of the food chopper. Another task on the way to food prep success is to coach them on safety. Plan for a way to wash hands, if possible, by providing a sink, dishpan, soap, and paper towels, or use a hand sanitizer as a backup. Before starting any food preparation or putting out supplies, clean tables or counters with a mild bleach solution in a spray bottle. Let the air dry the tables. Use paper or plastic cloths as an option. Rather than worry about contamination and temperature control for leftovers, it's usually best to just discard them. Before letting the children do the food prep, establish some common sense rules such as no running, no sharp objects waved about, pick up any spilled food, and don't eat the ingredients before they go into the dish. Thinking through the recipe step by step will let the leader manage the division of duties as well as the available space. Because they will skip over reading the recipe, it's a good idea to read it through with the children. Explain or show tools, food ingredients, and demonstrate steps if needed. In order to keep everyone on task, try to assign a duty to every child. This can be decided by the teacher or by the group, depending on the age of the children. Another decision is whether to have one supply table that everyone gathers equipment from or to have the supplies already at their stations. The age of the children and the room arrangement will likely dictate this choice. This recipe is an example of an easy to prepare recipe with enough duties to keep a small group of children busy while learning some food handling skills. Highlighted ingredients indicate basic steps in the preparation and skills that can be addressed in a demonstration. Dicing strawberries, cubing watermelon, cutting up pineapple, or just opening a can and setting up a serving station are skills that can be demonstrated and then practiced. Planning for division of duties and preparation stations will help with workflow and give all children a chance to contribute to the food preparation in a meaningful way. One example of how to divide a class would be to have one child per recipe or group gather ingredients, one child put out equipment and serving pieces, two to wash and dice strawberries, two to wash and dice watermelon, one to open the pineapple, and one to gather fruit as it is prepared and mix it together. 
That involves eight children, but duties can be combined for a smaller group. Remember to give instructions about cleaning up the station. Another example of a vegetable recipe that is a bit more complex for older children shows scissor skills, peeling and grating skills, slicing skills, and measuring skills. This involves more children and would be the kind of activity that a whole class might do and then would assemble their own pita. The duties chart shows 10 people working on the veggie stuffed pita recipe. The chart may be modified to suit your recipe and your group size, but the thought process of what steps need to be done and how many children logically can be involved is the same for any recipe chosen. Thank you for viewing this podcast created for the South Dakota Family Nutrition Program through SDSU Extension. Learn more about the Family Nutrition Program and resources on igro.org.